Hey guys, welcome back down to the workshop. Sorry it's been a while again. I know I've just been really busy, uh, but I'm back now. I've got another one for you. Uh, today we're going to be building a sword we designed and built with a customer called Bark Breaker. It's his own design and we just helped him along with it. Um, the name was given in Twitch by our namer of names, uh, Desperate Di Pirate Dan. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a lovely sword, his own design, like I say, and we built it. I don't have the item here to set, to show you because it's already been shipped, but I will put a picture up over the, this side. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. Um, uh, yeah, we've got uh, several more other videos uh, to edit and put up for you as soon as I get round to doing them. Work has picked up, so again, I'm being really busy. I apologize for that. But keep your comments coming in, keep your questions coming in. Um, I will get round to doing a casting video at some point, uh, as soon as I get a chance. And um, I actually have some casting coming up soon, so I might try and uh, record those for you. But uh, as always guys, give this uh, video a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up. I appreciate it, it really helps me out. If you really want to help me out, you can help me up on Patreon. It's a dollar a month or however much you want to uh, donate and it really helps me. Um, I do appreciate it. But uh, without any more babbling from me, let's jump straight into it, shall we? So here we go guys, starting like we normally do for any one-handed sword blank, we're going to use three sheets of 8mm uh, craft foam that we're going to glue together like a sandwich. Here I've already scored up an 8mm carbon fibre core and glued it into the first sheet of EVA foam. We've cut down a strip in the middle, glued it all together, now we're going to put some reinforcement on this just to stop the core from any sideward movement on the tip. And then we're going to sandwich one on the top, one on the bottom, and that will be our blank put together. Now we've got our blank made up on both sides of the EVA foam, we've got our reinforcement in, it's all glued down. You going over it with a rolling pin will really squash out any air which traps in there. Here you can see me marking up the centre line, so if I've got a fuller to put on or if I've got any detail to put on the blade, I've got a line to work with to make it more symmetrical. So this design does have a fuller on it, but it also has some protrusions coming off the fuller. So you can see me here just marking those up ready for me to cut out. With all the markings now on the blade ready for it to be uh, cut and trimmed we're just now putting on the uh, edges of the blade so i'm doing this on the side marking the center blade on both sides and mark that up as i go i'm trying to keep it as symmetrical as possible Okay, using a sharp or cleaned knife, we're going to start cutting in the tang on the blade. Now, try and stick within your lines. Don't go actually to your line. Uh, save that for the hand sanding later. You're always going to need to do a bit of sanding, no matter how clean your cuts are. And remember, a sharp knife, you're going to take less effort to cut a straight line.
as promised, here's your hand sanding. Now just take your time, don't rush this, just try and keep it nice and smooth, blow any of the dust off it regular, and just work it round in one solid long straight. You do not want to be just doing quick, small, little movements, because then the tang is going to be uneven and it'll show up in the, in the latex. Okay, now the tang is done, it's time to get back onto that fuller in the middle. Now, like I said, this fuller actually has some protrusions coming off the, set, the middle of it. So here, I'm just marking these down, ready for them to be cut out. So, using a very sharp knife on a 45 degree angle, or as close as you can get, just cut down nice and slowly. Remember, using a sharp knife, if you use a blunt knife, you're gonna tear the foam. Make sure it's a sharp knife and you're gonna do several long cuts until you get to the actual middle of where you're gonna do it. You can do this both sides. 45 degree on both sides will give you like a V-shape cutout where the fall will be. And then we go back in with a little bit of rolled up sandpaper, nice and gentle, and just smooth all that middle section out. And once again, as promised, back in with the sanding. Now this is just a little strip of sandpaper that I've rolled up nice and tight, and I'm just using it to rub up and down nice and gently. If you go too hard, you're gonna tear the foam and it's gonna make a mess. So you just run it up and down nice and slow and get rid of the loose. Next we move on to the cross guard. Now for this, I've had to draw, hand draw uh, a template for me to use to cut out onto the foam, as this is going to overlap the blade and the cross guard itself, and a little bit onto the handle. So I need this template done before I can actually build the cross guard, and then we will put the handle on, and then this template will be cut out onto foam, and then added and layered over all three. A little trick I like to use when drawing templates is I only draw one side. Once I have one side, I'll just score it down the middle, fold it over, and then trace it so then I've got it perfectly symmetrical. Now that the cross guard template is uh, all drawn up, I need to actually build the cross guard. Now this is just going to be like two, the size of two leaves either side with the width of the blade in between. So I'm just creating a leaf-like design and 
I will then cut this out, build it up with three or four layers of eight mil foam, and then the template that I previously drew out will be layered over using five mil crap foam or two mil. Now unfortunately the camera decided to screw up here and it didn't record a section of me building the actual handle. Now all I've done is used 5mm craft foam and I've wrapped it around and cut the core into a spiral, cut it trim and then added some black electrical tape and pulled it tight. Now you can see me adding a foam strip around it. So this is going to be fake leather if you like. We're going to make this look like it's a leather handle. Um, the way we're going to do this is by wrapping it round and then where the seams are we're just going to cut little grooves into it or using a soldering iron or a wood burner just to create those little overlap grooves. Now when you are burning foam guys with a soldering iron or a wood burner or whatever, make sure you're wearing a mask because the fumes are toxic. So we're just going over nice and lightly, just putting a little spiral pattern into the foam to make it look like it's leather. Now with the actual cross guard belt and the handle done, we can use our template that we drew out, cut it out of 5mm or 2mm foam, whichever you prefer. I think I did this one out of 2mm. Uh, and then the gem inside, which was uh, part of the design, I used a 5mm uh, trim and I built up, uh, I think, two layers of 8mm to make the actual gem inside stand up. So yeah, we're going to start with the 5mm uh, and 2mm for your cross guard detail and then an 8mm for the actual gem. So now we're uh, actually putting the gems on top of the main part of the detail for the cross guard. Once these are on then we can add any other details we need to and then put it actually on the weapon itself. For the vine or leaf type designs I'm just using 2mm craft foam and I'm just adding it on top of the already design, uh, cut out pieces. Now there's leaves on the bottom as well as on the top which just layer over the top coming out of the gem and then vines that will be coming out of the gem as well. Again just using 2mm craft foam, little strips, just stretching it out slightly, a little bit of glue and just take your time, don't rush.
Okay, onto the pommel. Now, once again, the camera decided to play up and did not record a small section. But all I did was literally let make multiple layers of 8mm EVA foam and cut it into the shape of a diamond. Now, one end was flat, flush, and the rest, the top end was the diamond. So the flat end would marry up to the handle. And then we would continue the leather wrap or fake leather wrap around that section and then make it all nice and uniform and then once we've got the gem we can start cutting out our floral pattern now we're going to wrap what looks like multiple layers of two mil eva foam around the gem to make it look like a rose and the gem is coming out of it Okay, now the actual rosebud is built, we're going to build up, the, or cut a template and build up the outer edge of the rosebud. So the bottom, it's like the green part, that, the stem, if you like, that built, holds the bud in place. So these are just going to be like four green leaves that just build up to the, the bottom of the bud and just join on to the hilt itself. Now this is going to also add a little bit more uh, support for the pommel holding on to the handle. Some of the last details we put on to this pommel is I'm just going to put a nice little single ring around the top of the handle and onto the bud. As you can see there, it just marries it up nicely and we'll sand that smooth so it looks like it's a single piece. Finally, the last finishing touch is a little like chevron on either side of the pommel where the handle meet. It's just a nice little pattern that the design called for and this is done with five mil craft foam and just glued on normally nice and smooth sand it smooth and then she's ready for glinko Now the glue coat guys is just a mixture of thinner and glue thinned down just putting a nice even coat on it try not to glump it up and just spray it over nice and gently and this will give the latex something to bind to other than nice smooth closed, closed cell foam on the top. Once the glue coat dries it's time for latex. Now, I normally do six to eight coats, even thin coats, and once that's done, I'll then add a, a black tin to a latex, and then put one or two black coats of latex on, and then the silver. Now, as you can see here, I've already done the silver, and now I'm adding uh, the chrome effect, and what this is doing is just highlighting it. Gives it a nice little worn look, because, you know, I don't like the brand spanky, shiny look new, so this looks as though it's actually you know come up an assembly line been battered about a bit and looks pretty good and real to me now here you can see me adding a thin white coat down the floor because i'm doing this because i want to highlight the red that's going to go in on after it so we're putting a nice white coat down then i'll replace it with the red and maybe a thin black line just to highlight the red once it's all matte nice and even. I'm also adding a white line to the 
handle where the red's going to come out. I've already done this with the gem. Now, as you can see, the gem has already been, had its red coat. So I'll do the same with the handle and the fuller. Once the white's dried, I'll put the red over it, a couple of coats of that, and it'll make it nice and bright. Next up, it's the cross guard leaves and the stem. Now these are done in multiple layers of green, so I've got lighter greens and darker greens on there. The veins themselves will be done with a gold. Uh, this is over the top of the black, which will make the gold stand out a little bit. Makes it look more rustic and old rather than bright, spanking, shiny new gold. Uh, now this is done with um, Flexi Paints gold powders which I think is a really nice gold paint. As you can see here, I'm now adding one of the darker greens, so this is gonna be a nice dark wash green over the top. I've also added a very light yellowy brown to the handle, because remember this is going to look like leather, so we've got a yellow, yellowy brown on there that we've mixed up and that'll sit there and then we'll darken that with a bit of dark wash and then a little bit of light highlighting as well. Painting both the gems and the ruby at the top. Uh, I've done a video on painting gems up, so you can watch that. This is just done in multiple layers of reds, getting lighter and lighter as I come out, and then using a white just to do the actual edges of the gem to make it look so it stands out. And when we add the varnish at the end, that'll really make it look glass-like and polished. Next we're painting the rosebud itself. Now the design called for a white rose uh, with pinkish red tips. So that's all we're doing here. We're just putting a little bit of pink onto the tips and then filtering it down towards the base. Uh, but it's the majority is white. So the pink is just added a little bit of contrast to it.
And last but not least is the weathering. Now this is done with Tamiya smoke. It's like a watered down black wash. I'm just going around any of the edges that need it, which will darken certain lines under the, you know, overlaps and things like that. And it will make other bits stand out better. And once this is done, you let it dry and it's time for the varnish. Now the varnish is still Isoflex special primer as always, but please make sure you use a respirator do it in a well ventilated area. It is very toxic. And that will be this build done. So there you are guys, that was Bark Breaker of start to finish. I um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope you, you try and make your own version of it. And if you do, send me some pictures uh, in the comments and uh, or send me to them on Twitch or on our Discord. However, I'd love to see uh, if any of you are following these uh, tutorials and actually making your own items. I'd love to see that. But, uh, but yeah, that's it guys. Thank you very much. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it and if you have give it a thumbs up give it a like and if you haven't already please subscribe it all helps me out we are actually getting quite close to the I've got the subscribers now I just need the watch hours to get uh, YouTube to actually like these videos and start making them a bit more popular but uh, we'll get there eventually but yeah as always guys take care now be good stay out of trouble and 